Welcome everyone to Las Vegas. My name is Alex Singers with Aving News, and I'm here with Ashley Kim. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. We are meeting for the first time. Very excited to be working with you here in Las Vegas. It is my first time not only at CES, but also in Las Vegas. Yeah, I mean, I can't believe that you lived so for so long and this is your first time in, in the Las US. Vegas. I'm a US citizen. I've never been to Las Vegas. Uh, you've been here for a lot of your life and you've been to CES for a while. How long have you been coming to CES? I would say from 2009, I've been here. So wow, more than a decade now. Since 2009, yes. amazing. All right, well, we're gonna go ahead and talk about all our experiences, but today is day one. And we got to see not only the opening speech for Media Day, mm -hmm. but also we got to do CES Unveiled. Right, right. So let's get started with the experience. So we got here at the Mandalay Bay. Right. Uh, and got in there and we got to do two different things basically. Number one, we got to see the opening comments, the opening speech. Right, the text uh, trends to watch. Steve Koenig. Right. And then we got to go into the actual products and companies themselves. Yeah, yeah. So why don't we start with this? Right now, this coming on behind us right here. Mm -hmm. uh, this was Steve Koenig's speech. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of things that he said that I thought were really interesting. A lot of trends, basically. He's a trends guy, right? Yeah. Uh, do you want to talk about the electric vehicles? That would be first. That was always for, always first for me. Mm -hmm. I've always appreciated when we go into that because I feel like it's it's one of those future tech topics that is are, it's kind of almost here. Right. But I think the difference right. now that he was bringing up today that was interesting was we don't talk about the cars anymore. We talk about the infrastructure tech, and that's kind of the big change that I'm looking forward to seeing mm -hmm. this this week in terms of the product uh, and the different well, software and hardware as well that they're coming out with. Yeah, I was kind of excited to see different like screens that were like placed in cars for sure. Um, yes, so, sort of that in-car experience was also a big part of the automotive segment right there. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, I also want to talk about the sustainability aspect of uh, the tech talk. Um, I do want to talk about the different methods of recycling and also uh, I love to recycle if I haven't mentioned that already. <laughs> um, I recycle whatever I can in Texas and um, I don't know about you but in Korea there's a lot of like recycling going on in general. There's a lot of pressure to recycle. Oh yeah for sure mm -hmm. and I think it's great that U.S. and CS is like really placing that giant burden uh, kind of on everyone, mm -hmm. and yeah. I think I think it should be pressurized. Um, sure. But to see that sustainability kind of come into everyone's lives and to make it even more easier for people to recycle would be great. Mm -hmm. And uh, kind of going on to the home health tech right. um, aspect. That was a big one for me too, and. This time, he kind of mentioned with a lot of the technology out there, it's not about the technology anymore. It is mm -hmm. about the implementation of that technology. Right. And I think that home health tech was a, was a big one, especially when it comes to remote sensor technology. Mm -hmm. Being able to have a patient come into the hospital, get checked out, and then after they've been diagnosed, instead of keeping them in the hospital, sending them home with the appropriate equipment mm -hmm. so that they can be remotely monitored. I think it's a big deal, especially when you consider the rising health costs in the United States. Oh, for sure. I think instead of having nurses check on you every few hours um, to have technology monitoring your vitals and stuff mm -hmm. would be much better cost-effective wise and hopefully that would lower the health cost for everyone sure. in America. And it's not just that, of course, it's also the remote care for people who can't make it to a hospital. For people sure. who are out there in the countryside, in right. any country, uh, mm -hmm. it gives them access to hospital and doctor expertise without having to go there. Yeah, I'm kind of talking about that whole health aspect. I want to make sure that everyone who is working, um, especially in the warehouses who are lifting heavy boxes all day, have the appropriate protection necessary to keep going on in their daily lives to um, work in these warehouses. Mm -hmm. And I do know they're has been a lot of exoskeleton suits in the past, but in CES 2023, I know they have a lot of showcase, especially surrounding the enterprise tech mm -hmm. and different kinds of logistics software, um, kind of like software as a service, but also kind of to protect the workers in general when they work in their uh, daily routines. Sure, absolutely. Uh, so logistics, including you know that exoskeleton technology was a mm -hmm. big part of this speech. The last part is something we both agree on, but I know that you're the expert on this one, gaming. What was mentioned about gaming? 
So, um, Steve that mentioned that a lot of people who are gaming are casual gamers, 41%, um, and they're very, very, very saturated in the mobile market. And it's very accessible. Mm. It makes sense. You know, everyone, when they're on the subway, especially in Korea, mm -hmm. um, they're going to pull out their phones because what are we going to do when you commute, right? You're going to mm. look at your phone. And it's, it's very interesting because that's a very nice market that people don't realize when they say gaming, they think of like PC gaming, sure. those intense gamers with like headphones and everything, Fortnite, blah, 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 you know? But the ones that bring in the most cash are people who are making these microtransactions Absolutely. on subways and stuff. So as a person who does microtransactions, <laughs> um, not every day, but I would say at least in a monthly basis. Sure. Uh, I think Steve brought up a great point about uh, gaming. Absolutely. And me as a non-gamer, one of the things I'd never had really thought about was the social aspect of gaming. I know you play socially with other people, mm -hmm. uh, but even just the simple things he was mentioning, I had been skeptical about the future of the gaming market, but it makes sense, especially in a world where we are separated, whether it be from a disease that comes right. out of nowhere, right. or just in general our trend towards staying at home right uh it is something that is here to not only stay but might be something that replaces i personally think social media mm. as we limit our friendships but continue to still crave that online friendship yeah. that we're going on to for sure and now with like applications like discord i don't know if you're if you ever heard about that um i'm not that old all right okay. come on <laughs> Well, Discord is like a big software right now that kind of connects all the gamers and sure. you can uh, kind of game together and share your screen if there's a non-gamer in your group to kind of like watch what you're doing. So to have that connection um, and, and community online, I believe is like the future of how people would treat going to a bar. So it's, the world is evolving every single day. Pretty interesting. So let's take a little bit from that speech and jump into this right here in front of us, mm -hmm. which is the unveiled for CES, right? Right, right. Uh, so he talked about the trends. These are the specific products and companies that those trends are all about. Right, right. Now, when we walked in there, there's a lot of people there at the beginning. Let me turn my voice down a little bit right here. Uh, first impressions when you walked in? That's, that's a lot of people. That's what I thought. Compared to last year, that is. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It seemed to be a lot of people and a lot of great companies that were excited to be back. I think mm -hmm. that was a, uh, something sure. I noticed is a lot of the people who were here last year, obviously excited to see more people. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, a lot of companies that had skipped a few years because right. of that as well. Right. And so that was a big part of it. Now, we're seeing some of the products here right now. But again, uh, there's everything from leisure that we're looking at right now to the healthcare industry, to the EVs as well, mm -hmm. to uh, everything we mentioned earlier. Let's get into specifics. Is there a company mm -hmm. that you can talk about that you found to be a standout? So this is the company that I want to mention, um, which is kind of talking about the rain. I was very interested. I was intrigued because they had a whole helmet going on. And I was like, what's going on? When I asked the the girl who was manning booth, um, she said that this helmet would determine when I would get my Alzheimer's disease. And oh my gosh, yeah, I did my DNA test in 23andMe, and they said that I have a high risk of uh, early onset Alzheimer's. So this would be a very good device for me to have. So it's checking on that one. Did you go as far as to get the results, or just try it on? I tried it on for a hot second, but I think they said I had to try it on for 10 minutes minimum. So. That was, I couldn't be there for too long, but I think um, if this technology came into hospitals or, or labs that I could just walk in, that would be great if I could just get an assessment within 10 minutes and be like, hey, you have a higher risk of Alzheimer's instead of me spitting in a bottle and sending it for six weeks. Sure, absolutely. And this can maybe even help track the progress of a potential disease or the changes in our own brain functioning as well yeah for sure i think it detects like different kind of like brain functions in general in your that's that's going on in, in, in up, mm -hmm. upstairs and to have this helmet that's so accessible i mean it is three grand but for hospitals to afford this right. it wouldn't be that much of a problem versus the traditional technology that we have in the hospitals where we have to go to through mri and different right. like other brain scanning technologies, this helmet would definitely shorten the time to diagnose an individual. 
Uh, well, that brain tech was pretty funky to talk about, but what about you? What impressed you? Uh, where we're going right now, which is right behind us. And to me, I mentioned the infrastructure of the EV well, ecosystem, basically. Right. But I think the other thing is it's not just about making it accessible, you know, mm -hmm. when it comes to where are the chargers at? Right. How do you change out batteries? Right. It's about making it desirable. And I think this is a company that stood out to me. This is a motorcycle that is not only an uh, electric motorcycle, but it's cool. Right. It looks like it came out of a Batman movie. That looks basically. pretty sleek, yeah. Uh, so the uh, unique parts about this were, one, the motor is actually in the back wheel, and the reason they made that is because they have to balance it because batteries are so heavy that normally batteries at the top, mm. um, he explained it better than I can, but right. they basically had to rearrange the entire motor battery system here mm. to make it safe uh, and bottom heavy mm -hmm. in a way in itself. And what you get now is just a really cool design out here that is, you know, that fits into, as you mentioned, not only American and European motorcycle culture, mm -hmm. but also Japanese and Korean oh, yeah. motorcycle culture as well. Yeah, it, it, I mean, that looks like it's straight out of Tron. Yeah, it, I think that's a big deal too, especially in the United States, mm -hmm. convincing people who have always loved, you know, loud engines and- right, like Harley Davidson. Harley Davidson, or even right. when you're talking about trucks and just smoke coming out of it, you, got to convince them that it is still okay, it is still cool to have electric. And to me, that's why even though we mentioned the trends were about the EV ecosystem, mm -hmm. this to me was the standout product in the EV environment right. for this show. Right, yeah. So that brings us to our final company that we want to talk about before we go on mm -hmm. to our next day. Right. Uh, and that's, you're going to introduce that right now. What yeah. do we have? I, I kind of ran into my friend Ayano and Gadget Touch, and this is her kind of like interviewing this segment into Atmos Gear, which is kind of this wearable uh, electronic inline skating product. And I'm pretty scared because as a figure skater, I do not trust anything that's motorized uh, with wheels. <laughs> but she did try it on. She said she felt very tall because the wheels are huge. But uh, yeah, I kind of like went into this other booth that had a wearable with like lots of mm. different sensors. And they had a lot of interesting things going on. Like the guy had this like mouthpiece in front of him that was kind of like a Bluetooth mouth mouthpiece that kind of attached to the mic with every sensor imaginable. He had like a chest sensor. He had like a hand sensor, <laughs> yeah. he had like a knee sensor, and I'm like, that's a lot of things. That's a lot of sensors, but I'm guessing if we wanted to fully immerse ourselves in the metaverse, that's that's what we need. We kind of need to look silly uh, in order to kind of experience this alternate real reality that we're trying to get in, but I know that's like kind of like a big thing in Korea. I, mm -hmm. I, I know you lived in Korea more than I did, but how do you feel about that, like the whole metaverse? Situation. I mean, I think more than any other country that Korea is really not only pumping in their time and effort, but really putting in money into the metaverse. Mm -hmm. So uh, although this company is not from Korea, I think some of these products, as well as some Korean companies, are going to really put out some interesting products in the next couple of years. Yeah. And we'll see probably more here as we continue on into the week at CES. Now we, really this is day one, this is day one of media day, not even right. the actual CES. Right. right. Uh, and so we've got to see not only a couple of products, a couple of companies, but also the opening remarks from Steve. Mm -hmm. And I think that is really just a taste of what's to come. Oh yeah, it's the tip of the iceberg for sure. So with that being said, my name is Alex Sigrist. This is Ashley Kim. And we're here with Aving, and we're gonna be here tomorrow and the next day and the next day till the end of the show. So make sure that you come back and check it out with us. We'll see you next time. Thank you. <laughs>